morning and it's Thursday and welcome to Blabbing for Britain where John and I discuss topics of the day joined by our friends and uh, if you want to come on camera then just press the calling button. Morning John. Good morning Stephen and welcome to you on this bright and sunny day. It is yes I was just reading a bit on the uh, in the BBC about the weather because uh, we've both had hail and snow in the last couple of days and apparently statistically there is more snow in April than there is in November. So there you are. We should expect snow in April. Oh dear. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, now, changes in Blab this week? No. Nothing's changed. Um, I, I, they did say the other week they'd actually fixed the book for recording. I'm not totally convinced on that one. Most recordings are coming through, but the, the special show that you and I did last night for Empire Cred, yeah. uh, we've no recording for that yet. I have uh, written to them at Blab 9-11, and we'll see what happens, because that was quite a good show. As a, you know, if we do that once a month, so you never know. Uh, because I, the, the thing that came out of it is we actually managed to help Stephen uh, and... Um, Name, 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 name. Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Stephen. <laughs> help, help Stephen and Lisa uh, get a bit more information about uh, the wonderful Empire Up Crowd. Um, and we'll just put a link in there for anybody who's watching who doesn't know about Empire Up Crowd. Go to that link, uh, and you'll find out a little bit more. And when our video is processed, you'll find out even more than that. <laughs> yeah, uh, been on Empire today. Gosh, just looking at some excitement. I don't know what's going on. Um, there's been yes, I'm uh, best not so. Uh, uh, there's been some interesting posts. Let's put it that way. Uh, right, I'm trying um, to get this through the 900 barrier at the moment. I will chipping help you away, all I can. Chipping away. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Angelica got through the 700 barrier last week and she's very The 800s out. I found most difficult. <laughs> oh, the down. doldrums. Up, down. Yeah, I know. When people, people leave and I the think prices go down. I find it strange, you know, you have a run of success and then people sell your shares and you think, what? Why? Why? <laughs> My price is going up. I did profits, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Anyway, in other news, in, in uh, Apple are being given advice on what they should do because for the first time in 13 years, last quarter, the sales fell, fell, didn't they? Which Amazing. is quite a surprise. You know, I mean, given the product range that they've got, um, I think, do you think we're reaching saturation on iPhones and iPads and are people getting fed up with well, changing every year? You know, there's now more. Um, Android phones in Europe than there is iPhones, so um, I guess they must be getting worried. Yeah, Android, Android, Android. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, Samsung have got that wrapped up to a large extent, haven't they? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's... oh well, no, I've got a HTC. So. All oh, right. Okay. There you are. <laughs> HTC and Samsung have got that wrapped up. Well, HTC <laughs> seem to have lost their market dramatically as well i mean you go back three just three years and htc had a large share of the market and yeah very tiny and yet it's a quality product yeah indeed i i uh found an app yesterday um just a minute just let me uh, find it again um which is nothing to do with apple but um i'm just going to try and find Right, okay, looking. I got it right. Okay, uh, five, four, three, two, and I am going to be back and I'm going to share it on the desktop uh, because this is an app that works. Now, you should see on the desktop now. France. All right. Not Italy, yeah. France. No, Italy, France, yes. Now, France is uh, named after Franz Joseph, Austrian emperor. 
All right. Uh, because they believed that he was a good guy, and that's that's how they got the name. Our but, friend. Yeah. But, but the beauty of it is, France, as you can see from the icons on the desktop, and I've been using this for a couple of days now, it works. The problem is if you've got WhatsApp and you've got Messenger and you've got Skype and you've got um, another, you've got four apps open on your desktop, yeah, or in your browser. France, uh, basically, you download France onto your PC desktop. You then link it into Skype, you link it into WhatsApp, you link it into um, uh, you know, four, four, well, I've done it into four different ones. And all the messages then come on one screen yeah yeah so rather than having to have skype open uh and having facebook messenger open and etc etc especially slack uh i've got i'm in two groups on slack and keeping those open in the browser window is a pain in the yeah and even the app so what happens with with france is that you get uh warnings but you're only getting one uh warning rather than four warnings yeah so if skype and uh, the rest contact you all at the same time you just get one warning on your screen oh that's interesting i i've been using a product for some time called airdroid have you used that yep yep and that's yep. Uh, that's quite a neat product that uh, allows yep. you to do uh, quite a lot of things um mm -hmm. such as look at your pictures run your videos etc direct on your screen from your camera right. and drag and drop them from your camera as well right yeah yeah i quite like airdroid and right. the other one that i like can't think of its damn name now do you have those days yes yeah yes we do. look out look out uh, look okay. out is uh, a multiple um multiple area products um but it's effectively an antivirus for your phone all right okay yeah so when you download anything it checks it to see if there's any nasties in it but it's also got other features like can um, say you lose your phone yeah um you can drop into it on your uh, tablet or on your screen and uh, locate your phone and not only that you can make it it pit he pitch oh i think that's a terrible word where did it invent that word? make it emit a high pitch warbling noise yeah. so that say you've dropped it in the undergrowth you could be yeah. walking around with your tablet looking at the map yeah you can't see it hit another button on your tablet and the phone will emit and then you can wipe your phone remotely as well so if you can't find it after all of that you can uh, make the phone wipe itself says so it's completely useless to anybody which is um if you lose your phone very useful to do um the, the app my, my favorite app on android is uh, a bluetooth tracker for the simple reason that i occasionally i say occasionally misplace my fitbit <laughs> <laughs> My Fitbit lives it in my jeans, in my jeans pocket, and it's there all day. I don't, I forget all about it. But if I change my jeans, forget to take it out of the pocket, or I take it out to recharge it, I lose where it is. And the uh, the Bluetooth tracker will will emit a signal which tells you whether you're getting closer or further away from your Fitbit. <laughs> and you go until you actually get close, and then you look around, and genuinely you find it. And it could be, it could be under the bed. Uh, he found it there. It could be in my jeans, uh, in the uh, next to the washing machine, ready to go in the washing machine. So I've been rescued from there. So uh, Bluetooth tracker is very useful in finding your lost Fitbit. Um, oh. In terms of uh, talking about Fitbit, we I think we found a site which is called Bounce. I'm just going to. Um, hope so. Yeah, just making sure I got the right URL before I post it here um no i haven't got the right url okay i'll tell you about it and find the url later uh bounce is uh a rewards app but it's tied to your fitbit and if you have a fitbit uh it will reward you five points for every day that you go over seven thousand steps now nominally 
uh, people who have Fitbits go for 10,000 steps a day, five miles a day, um, which is the target. If you can do that, then you're going to stay fit. If you can do five miles a day, 35 miles a week, then uh, you're doing well. Uh, but that's a high target to have. Uh, bounce sets a target at 7,000 steps a day, three and a half miles. Uh, and if you do that, you get bonus point rewards. And once you've got 700 points, you get a five pound voucher to All spend, right. to spend at the store of your choice. So Argos, what have you. Uh, it's just an extra way of motivating you to go out and do your, your daily. Now, on average, if, if we stayed at home all day, we'd be doing 2,000 steps anyway. Yeah, you'd walk a mile a day, even if you didn't go out of the house, um, especially if you've got chickens, because if you went into the garden to feed the chickens, then that's obviously an extra few steps. But I will find a link to, to Bounce, and uh, I'll post it here later for anybody who's interested in I have to tell my daughter about that because because she's a she's a um, healthcare assistant uh, working on a working on a ward, so she's continuously walking all yeah. day long. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the tracking tracking your steps is is a great way to uh, find out how well well you're doing. Um, of course, you can take it further. The latest one's got a heart rate monitor and all sorts of whizzy things, but the essential thing is is knowing how far you've walked each day or run um so that's the advert for fitbit over if anybody's using a competitor of fitbit which they're happy with if you want to come on here and talk about it then uh, please please do so should we go back to phones yes sure Our contract is up next month okay well, i'm seriously considering having a windows phone oh well, the, Everybody okay. looks at me as if I'm mad. <laughs> I, I, if, if you said that two years ago, I'd have joined them, but things have changed, haven't they? I think so. Um, I think the fact that it's Outlook based, the fact that I can get 365, Office 365 personal on it, not that I ever see me using it on there, but um, I don't know, it's just got a bit of an appeal. And the quality of the the camera on the latest 950 XL is just ah, right. stunning. Right, now we're getting down to it. It's the photography. Because, actually, although we talked about some apps that we uh, I, that we yeah. use, um, I really only use it to make phone calls and take pictures. Right. That's okay. really 98% of what I use mine for. I, I uh, my main use when I'm out and about uh, is to uh, for it to check my emails. I've written a program. You'd be surprised at this. I've written a program called My Message Hub, which sits on my desktop, and it monitors my emails. And I go into a list of people. If they email me, then I want to be pinged on my phone. And uh, I know they're probably. So that says that if your clients email you. Yeah. No, that must be marketable, Stephen, surely. I'm hoping so, yes. Yes. Um, I don't have email on my phone, full stop. Oh, right, okay. My attitude is that if somebody wants me that much, they'll bloody speak to me, yeah? Or at least... Ah, right. You actually use your phone for phone calls? Yeah. What else is it for? <laughs> <laughs> It's for a whole range of things. A, a phone is, is uh, a smartphone. is a wonderful device. Um, uh, welcome, James yeah. and Nick and Ben. Nice yep, welcome. to be here today. Uh, if you want to join us on air, just press the call-in button and you're happy to come on and you can chat about anything you like. This is Blubbing for Britain. And our prime aim is to get as many people um, familiar with the Blub layout as possible. If you're here for the first time on Blub, can you just put a one? in the message box on the right hand side right okay I'll, uh, if i don't need to run through the uh, takeoff routine then um of what the brand screen is come on you really really always wanted to be an air stewardess didn't you and the exits are over <laughs> and the life rafts are under your seat oh and right if okay. those nozzle falls down that's your air yeah yeah that, true true uh, welcome to <laughs> welcome to everybody who's joined us uh, I don't really want to be an air stewardess. It was never a, a, a train driver. When I was younger, I wanted to be a train driver. Uh, that, that was, we're going back to the days of steam there, uh, steam locos and the Royal Scotsman and uh, the St. Bevel 
all the great steam engines that used to uh, run along the, uh, the railways in the UK when we had railways. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, Mr. Beeching, who got rid of a third of our railways, uh, was before our time. But uh, but there are yeah. sections of it coming back. Oh, indeed, not, indeed. not just in preservation, but um network rail is starting to bring sections back into use that uh so there's a link round dudley that's back there's a link across the top that runs across to walsall and across um to i'm trying to think of the town that's cannock that's been uh, yeah. reinstated and various other small runs are being brought into use uh to give better control of traffic so that they can route freight round yep. where it doesn't need to go uh, so the dudley link's been reopened it's freight only but it has been reopened so this is a good sign that's brilliant bring back the trains that's what we all say uh i mean they're, they're vital parts of the economy aren't they as yeah. you say freight carrying freight from one end of the country to another one one train equals 30 lorries at least i would say that's better an assumption. Somebody what about, what about may have... trams, Stephen? What's your thought on trams? Well, on trams. Now, first of all, the, the, the archetypal tram is the one you see at Blackpool, which runs along the front from Fleetwood right through to uh, to Bispam and beyond. Uh, and the, those trams never disappeared. Trams disappeared from, from my hometown of Burnley and from Manchester, from everywhere. But since they made a comeback in Manchester, I'm a fan. Well, we get our first, we've got a tram line that runs up to Wolverhampton, but okay. it runs from Snow Hill Station up to Wolverhampton. But we're getting our first inner city tram starting next Tuesday. No problem. From Snow Hill Station to yep. New Street Station. Right, and Snow Hill I know, I know quite well. I spent many an hour waiting for trains there. Going through to uh, through to Stratford, um, and Alan, memory lane, vaulting purple colour though. I quite understand <laughs> why they are revolting purple. It's not um, even a nice shade of purple. It's a revolting purple. So mm -hmm. we're going to have these purple things running through pedestrian areas. Yeah. Are they sponsored by Cadbury's? Uh, no, no, no. Cadbury's is a bad word to use round here. All right. Good morning, oh, sir. Well, why? why? On their ruin, the, well, the, it got took over by Kraft, as I think you probably did, aware, yeah. which then split Kraft into two companies. Um, and basically, uh, they've ruined uh, the cream egg by changing the chocolate for a cheap and nasty chocolate. They've made a lot of people redundant. They've changed mm -hmm. the shifts um, and they, they're not protecting the um, Quaker village like oh. used to so we're starting there's lots of fuss about buildings happening and things being done in the quaker village that uh cabras would have quashed before yeah, I mean, some melens or whatever they're called now i don't give a monkeys and it's a real shame because it's a, a, a lovely area oh sue's joined us from uh, county london derry i these, these jet setters, John, uh, travelling all over the universe and, and London Drake too. It, it's good to see you, Sue. Uh, as Alan's just said, we we're reminiscing this morning. Uh, we're looking back at the way things used to be. Um, John's going thinking about getting a Windows phone. If anybody's got any... Everyone keeps phone. laughing at me every time I say it, but it's a piece of cool kit these days. Yeah. People are giving advice to Apple on how to make money. And uh, in parallel with that uh, just let me check this out before i uh facebook have tripled their quarterly profits now there's the thing apple apple going down and facebook going up sue says the internet is pants in the in the island we know all about that we have a friend over there who blob yeah. blobs with us i keep saying blob i have got blob on the brain who blabs with us who um the conversation is so intermittent it's not true is it <laughs> true true I, I oh, think welcome we should, ken yeah uh we should come up with it we, we've got blabbing we've got blogging and we want a, a word in between i think blobbing might do it 
You know, we might be able to coin a new phrase. Blobberlop little weed. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Remember blobberlop little weed? Yes, we are going back now, John. We're going back to uh, Firefox, man. Oh, dear. Help, rescue us. <laughs> <laughs> the crash has right. and a wind turbine. Oh, mm. Alan's going to come and join us. Dr. Ray, Dr. Ray. All right. Um, well, maybe he's not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here's another one who lives in the middle of bloody nowhere. <laughs> oh, hello. Hi, Hi, Alan. Alan. How are you? Oh, you're okay uh, today, are you? Right. I can't, I can't, I can't stand in this I'm afraid right. I don't like a mouse, Alan. Uh, Alan, if, if, you, if you could go out and come back in, it will work perfectly. But at the moment, uh, your sound, your sound, whilst it sounds good to you, to us sounds like chipmunks, and it's nothing you've done. <laughs> so if you come out, come back in. Again. Come back in again, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Blogging uh, on blab? No, no, no. We're not blogging on blab. We're we're, we're just confused. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. And this time, we know that you're going to get through. I just want the uh... morning. <laughs> oh. oh right okay i think you're gonna have to come out of blab and come back into blab. yeah if you, if you co copy the url close blab uh sorry if you close the page and then come back in another browser window or browser tab uh, okay. anyone else like to come in and just on the fourth seat how about you catherine Ah, right, okay. No, we're, we're, we're all the way from Ireland with. Oh, Sue. If, if, if you want. Good morning, Sue. Top of the morning Hello. to you. Top of the oh. morning to you. Oh. you <laughs> all right. So, what takes you over can to you Ireland? Okay? What takes you over to Ireland? Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we can. can you no oh, brilliant. Can you look out the window. Can I turn the camera around now? Yep, we can see. We can see a window frame. <laughs> oh, it doesn't look very nice out there. Ah, oh, right. No, it's been snowing. Can't really see anything. I went down to Loch Ney, uh, Loch Ney last night. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Absolutely lovely. Hello. So, you're in Ireland. Uh, yes. <sighs> Hello. <laughs> Yes, I've um, got a oh, new client okay. who makes concrete paving. And I've uh, just spent a day with them. And, uh, um, and I'm going to be doing a talk in oh, London brilliant. for them Wish on, well with uh, at the end of May. Ah, uh, right. So, yes. Hello, today. is that better? Yay! Hey. <laughs> Third time look, Alan, that's perfect. We can now hear I, you. Think I, yes. I think I've also changed the, um, the mic from the webcam to... Uh, to, to this this jobby here so that's probably helped all right so what's so i don't know what's new yes uh, how's life at fletching glass houses oh it's fine it's fine we're um selling lots of spinach if anybody wants any i can send you tons <laughs> <laughs> i've been uh, i've been experimenting with sort of um p sponsoring clicks on amazon and uh yeah. So far, I'm sort of selling lots of kaffir lime leaves, but nothing much else. Oh, well. Which is kind of uh, a bit unexpected, really. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Oh, Alfredo's oh. been having a okay. talking to me about live blogging. Does anybody have Facebook? On the text. Like? No, I haven't tried that because okay. Facebook is the right uh, audience. I've been watching Kev Arrow episode. a few times on Facebook Live. And I know um, certain people. Yeah. And, uh, there's a, a local young lady that yeah. Facebook Lives twice a day, always from her car. She's not moving, I may add. She does Good. not stream and drive. But twice a day she does a, a uh, how her day has gone. Um, which is quite interesting, really. She talks about business more than more than getting a hair burned, but uh, yeah. But I, I haven't really seen anyone succeed with it yet. 
Sue, so you're involved in. Um, been watching Tan Four News have been using it recently for um, right. doing Q and yeah. A uh, from yeah. Liverpool after the Hillsborough inquest verdict. They've been doing right. a Q and A. Got a question about live blogging, Thomas, and that's been quite good. What is live blogging? Can we explain it? Or... Yes, um, uh, live blogging is. Uh, well, the, the traditional way of describing it is um, writing on a web page okay. um, about something as it's happening. So, um, for example, you'll see news organisations um, live blogging from even from a courtroom or from a press um, mm -hmm. release. Um, what do they call them? Press conference. Um, Some will be there with a uh, with a keyboard writing what's actually been saying, um, and of course, live tweeting is a version of that. Um, but um, the other thing about live blogging is there are various tools that you can use to make it um, more interactive okay, yeah. and not just one person writing stuff. Um, so yes. um, if you think about uh, Storify, storify.com, that's a tool which is really about curate, curating together links and things from all over on the internet so you can drag tweets in and flicker images and youtube video and any link to anything and also write yeah. text um, and you can do it in real time but it's not perfect for that but it's really good for collecting together things as you're going along at an event i do that quite a lot but there's a, i found a new um tool recently which is much more like how the news organizations do it um where and again you can embed it on your website um, and I'm trying exactly, to okay. well, when it comes back know. to you if you let us know we'll publish it <laughs> I can't remember after um, along with the YouTube video that we'll get from here have Stop. you embedded this one on your blog, blog Stephen yeah today not today no because no. of course you can embed the blab so as it goes out live on your blog so. yeah uh, directly your from blog. your website you know, so you can key to this where you're on, on the mobile, mobile, aren't you? It, mobile. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a share last 30 seconds button. Next to that is an embed button, uh, which is grayish. And you take the uh, HTML from there and uh, it embeds this blab, live blab into your website, um, which is pretty good. It means you can attract people to your website. Well, so rather cool. than, uh, but the thing is that you can't actually take part. You can watch, but you can't actively type in text or. or no. Oh, yeah. Theoretically, yeah, just, let, just click button can left hand corner on, on the web page and, and take you straight to, straight to here. Because uh, I think that, for me, that's a really important thing because most of the people that I'm communicating with, and I've seen this with Twitter because, you know, I started out using Twitter. Most people I knew weren't on Twitter, so I've been really interested in connecting, getting a connection between online and the real world, if you like, or from those platforms to people's perception of the internet, which is really, you know, websites, websites they're familiar with, or maybe your website, or a web page. Yeah. They can identify with a web page and they can see what's going on there. But if you said, oh, I'm going to Twitter, then they've got, they might have to log in to do things. They, you know, they have to put something on their phone. If it's just a URL, then they're, they're you know, more comfortable with that. And of course, then of course you also get the Google juice and so on, um, and the traffic wherever else you're sharing it to. Um, so it's yeah, I, I, ideally, I always like to stick stuff. It does. I mean, I was speaking to the other night. Yeah, that uh, we, we go with the mantra that if it's your territory, it's not going to disappear. And that's, that's very true. If you're going to post anything on the web and you want to keep keep it in your own garden, and just paying homage to Alan there, then if you want if you want to cultivate it, if you want to do it on your own place, on your own website. You want traffic to go there, traffic from Twitter, traffic from Facebook, and you want to lead it back. But the other side of the coin is I was speaking to uh, Marty Smith, who's a content curator. And he doesn't care where he creates content. He'll create it on um, Scoop It. He'll create it on Medium. And he builds a community on each of those sites. Yeah. So he's, he's, he's got a support group going on, uh, on Scoop It, um, on Medium. And there's people networking 
on those on, on the sites. Now, I, I never thought of Scoopit as a network site, but apparently it is. Basically, what's happening is so people the, having the, conversations the on it. as I do it is I see something I like and I put it on Scoopit. What I don't do is comment on it. Uh, well, only occasionally, because we should comment on it. So what he does yeah. is he gives his own editorial and everything that he posts, and then people start connecting with him and talking about the particular topic that he's raised. Yeah? So he's getting conversations going, starting conversations. I yeah. think that's quite interesting because I did quite a lot of activity a few couple of years ago um, with all these curation tools, and I did a lot with embedding um content into sort of two or three of the sites i was running through sort of using things like blidget or or paper.li or indeed scoop it um but as you say we never I've, I've never done a great deal of of sort of commenting but um certainly i think particularly with the sort of band site it definitely helps to have the sort of facebook page embedded in there plus a couple of other things so that you've actually you, you've got sort of default rich content yeah there all the time. That's true. And I think you're, um, this guy's right, Stephen, that actually on a lot of these places, communities are developing. I mean, you only have to look at YouTube, don't you? That um, now YouTube has become a, a conversation yep. platform as well as a publishing platform. Um, and, so and, and a search engine YouTube, platform, so, actually. So, you know, um, millennials. What do you think this? <laughs> And a search engine platform, yeah. So if you've got um, you've got all these people doing their user generated content on YouTube, and then you've got not just millions of people watching it, but then then a proportion of those people having conversations underneath. So instead of having, um, the, oh, the, oh, we're frozen. I think. It looks like I'm um, suffering from the uh, Irish broadband again. <laughs> okay, I'm going I'm to say goodbye. Really good to see you all. Okay. Yeah, have a good day, Sue. Thank you for joining us. Uh, yeah, bye, 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 Sue. Later. Take care. Bye. Well, that was that was good. I, I, we love it when people people join in, Alan. And, uh, <laughs> thank you, Sue. Yeah, I mean the, the thing is that the content curation uh, is is a wonderful way of actually becoming known isn't it i mean i i curate on several topics um and i become known for those topics yeah you obviously don't know what they are but they, it, back in the day this is two or three years ago <laughs> about, uh, i've <laughs> moved on to since then but content curation is one way to actually get your message out by becoming um the go-to person who has knowledge of, about a particular subject yeah, I must say I've basically sort of um, been fairly remiss over the I mean, about six months ago. I collided with this um, gig teaching at the business school in Southampton. So yeah. um, I've been <laughs> spending my spending my time reading up about all kinds of things to do with digital marketing, and I've had no time to put any of it into practice. So uh, I've kind of got a uh, a, a vast amount of, of 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 information that needs processing. So I'm kind of uh, I need to kind of do that a bit and then uh, maybe we'll sort of start transforming the world again. I don't know. We'll have to see. <laughs> Another book? Oh, yes, quite possibly. <laughs> I've, got to re I've got to revise the, the, the last one because um, it was five years ago, so all the social media stuff is hopelessly out of date. In fact, yesterday afternoon, I went through and deleted all the bit uh, uh, and, and f saw how many references to Academy there were in the previous ones. So. <laughs> oh, that's long dead now. I know. Well, it, well, it, well it's, it's actually probably only a couple of years, but it seems like a lifetime, you know. Right. Uh, just a reminder for everyone uh, that uh, tonight, well, oh, tonight, 5 p.m., Loving for Britain is going global. Uh, what we want to do, John and I, is, is to reach out to uh, people in America and uh, see if we can have a chat with them as well. I mean, we've been joined by several Americans over, over the months. We've had our beekeeper, our uh, politics expert to explain them the sort of uh, run into the 
election in the USA. Yeah. Do you, do you, do you think it's possible to explain the American election? <laughs> it was pretty damn good, actually. <laughs> you explain Caucasus to us, by which we knew nothing about. Oh, I see. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So it, it didn't try to explain why people vote for such and such a candidate. And, oh, uh, right. We, we've spoken, we, we, well, my stance is I still can't understand how Mr. Trump is doing so well. Um, and it's very difficult to, from this side of the pond to know why. There must be a lot of uh, dissatisfaction uh, amongst the American populace. He's hitting nerves, isn't he? He's, well, I think basically, I mean, it's the same. It's it's tapping into the same vote, uh, same vein that the Brexiters are tapping into. You know, people yeah. just feel that they've been marginalised, that the world is being run for the benefit of large corporations, and there's bugger all they can do about it. And I think they don't like it, and they're prepared to listen to anybody who sounds confident enough about having an answer. Do I think yeah. they have any answers? Well, probably not, but that's a separate issue. I think the degree of dissatisfaction with the status quo is really quite concerning, to be honest. Yeah, because that's the problem, isn't it? Not that, that certain candidates are doing well, but that so many people are, are disempowered. Well, just totally pe peed off, aren't they? Well, I think the scariest thing is, I mean, it's not so much that Trump is leading, but look who the number two is. I mean, that man's a complete swivel-eyed lunatic. <laughs> uh, right okay don't name him is that a definition Alan? <laughs> well you know they don't call me dots of bollocks for nothing you know <laughs> <laughs> all right okay we'll, we'll not mention either of the i have i have this, uh, yeah that's right well perhaps uh, i need to get back and mark some more scripts i've got a hundred okay. scripts to move but to mark by next sort of uh next tuesday so i probably get better get back to work anyway it's good okay. to talk to you guys and it's uh lovely to see you again Alan. Right. And yep. uh, we'll see you soon. Okay, take care. Take care. Bye bye. Right. Uh, would anybody else care to come and have a natter with us? Yeah. Two uh, spare seats, or there will be in a moment. This is true. If we, oh, right. Okay. Come on, Catherine, be brave. Um, oh, going to join us. Morning, Liam. Morning. Morning, guys. Oh, perfect sound. Perfect yeah, picture. Yeah. <laughs> what know. more do we want? 4G. <laughs> he liked this, the Germans would say, perhaps for a while, you know. Uh -huh. Anyway, uh, Stephen, a couple of weeks ago, uh, you mentioned about having a takedown on YouTube of a video of yours. Uh, oh, this is going back. I, I, uh, all my videos are up there. I've had a problem five months ago. Yeah, uh, but what yeah. I was interested in what you raised at the time was your discovery uh, that there was effectively a faceless oh yeah process right, okay. that you couldn't penetrate okay yeah, yeah. so the, the, i became a recipient of a takedown complaint earlier this week on monday okay okay yeah so i've had reason to reflect on that in in relation to what you were just talking about about content curation and where youtube you know is central to so much as a hub nearly mm -hmm. of where information is processed through or referred to so i i got a, a a complaint um sent to me and it was followed by another complaint and it related to uh <clears throat> i mean my interest is in is in using youtube as a, an expose process of um, both public service and political yeah. wrongdoings in the country. That's whatever. That's my interest. Yeah. Okay. But part of what I did is, um, as part of, we had a census in Ireland um, on last Sunday, which was the 100th anniversary of the Irish Revolution. Mm -hmm. um, and as part of that, I had been sent material from the Central Statistics Office, which... Uh, was supposed to have a redacted set of identities from people. But okay. the PDF in which it was sent to me basically had a black box put in front of it, but the data was uh, accessible by simply right. selecting the data. And I just selected, put it into a spreadsheet and 
posted it on YouTube as an explanatory process about the breaches of data in a process we're guaranteed as citizens that our data will be protected for 100 years. Now, mm -hmm. it is what I understand is that the Central Statistics Office, in a surreptitious way, contacted individuals and asked them to lodge complaints because companies can't do so. No, mm -hmm. I'm not complaining. I'm not challenging at this point the rights and wrongs, but I entered into that labyrinth that you had mentioned. So I followed the, I, they, they gave me a link and they said, here's a link to tell you what our community standards were, which I yeah. examined. And it is interesting that there's two elements where YouTube are concerned. One is the breach of copyright, which is a commercial implication. Yes. And the other is the, breach of individuals uh, what they claim is any information which could uniquely identify an individual mm -hmm. right. and according to my reading of their terms that any individual whatsoever who is uniquely identified on youtube has the right to seek to have that material redacted blurred out or the video removed yeah no just that's very important in terms of the depth of what i've said You've just discussed uh, Donald Trump there, for example. Mm -hmm. It would appear to me from what they've written that if you, if Donald Trump, a video of Donald Trump in an election mode was put on YouTube, Donald Trump could simply unilaterally determine to have that removed. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, and and if the fact that, none, that so many millions of pieces of data exist on YouTube without them having removed, being removed, is simply because YouTube don't act until they get a complaint. Correct. So one of the mechanisms people use is they keep getting other people to put it back up in different names in different places. That's not really my interest at all. Now, YouTube do discuss in their guidelines that they take into account public interest yes. um, versus privacy, uh, you know, balances. Um, but obviously, as you said, they don't give any feedback on any of their thinking. No, it's just, there's no reason given, is there? No, no. Not to your particular case. It's all generalized. Yeah, well, but the other thing, is, I seem to be getting two threads of communication from Google. One is obviously just a pure robot. And the other one seems to have a, a sort of a more deliberative uh, communication. Now, whether that's because their algorithms are designed as they possibly are for robots to talk to robots, you know, that's another bigger concern. Yeah. But for example, their guidelines give you 48 hours in which to respond or react. Yes. And essentially, they tell you you have 48 hours to edit the video. And they've given me a time at a period at 2.59 in the video, edit that. Yeah. Or else they say either edit it or if you remove it, we will simply stop the process and it right. won't go any further. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But if you leave it there, their review team will examine it and may or may not decide to remove it. And that may or may not act as a one of three strikes against you. Yeah. yeah. The, the, now, what actually happened was 16 hours and more in advance of the deadline, I then got an email to say that they had removed the video. So what I've been panning is a letter to whoever in YouTube really to reflect on the fact that I've been following their guidelines to the letter. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if a machine is algorithmically analyzing and making decisions then machines read digital i mean if you, if machine sets 48 hours as a time code yeah. it simply doesn't concatenate that back to 35 no. hours right? but it does raise concerns i mean firstly i told them look at i'm only a small guy in the west coast of Ireland. i'm not going to be fighting google i mean I've, yeah, that's that's a joke like but i have been looking for an alternative platform because i mean later today i'm going to be publishing um, phone recordings with officials in the state, which I will have uh, analyzed and forensically um, commented on. Yeah. And obviously, I, I don't want to, I'm not interested in fighting with Google. And I'm of, just reflecting here. I've been examining Vimeo and its terms and conditions, oh, which I've yeah. had stuff for nine years. Yeah. And they don't mention anything about, you know, personal. And they do talk about if you're harassing somebody. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. a different thing. I'm just wondering, has anybody any thoughts on that? Because in terms of what you discussed there was content curation yeah. and particularly when it comes to video and bandwidth, the only game in town is the big players with the render farms. That, 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 that's true. I mean, YouTube, uh, if you, the shock I had was that there was a, an interview I did uh, with Jackie in the early days when I was getting going. 
and the video was posted and somebody as you say somebody somewhere who you don't know makes a complaint uh and google come at you and youtube come at you and they say right okay we think that this video is is copyright somebody else uh and you should we're going to take it down you have one appeal you can only appeal once and if that appeal goes against you you will lose your youtube account if it goes for you then as we are here today five months later uh then youtube is your best friend but it no, is funny. it's very one-sided yeah, it may have changed a little in that they're telling me there's a three strikes rule. Uh, they have told me that their decision in my case will not invoke a strike against me. Because, no. I mean, you know, yeah. I suppose apart from anything else, it's quite obvious from what I'm doing that the issue is a public interest issue. Um, now, I mean, to be fair, given that we all use YouTube for nothing and they're only interested in making money out of click-throughs, if I had five million views in my YouTube video, nobody would have taken it down. I mean, I'm also aware of the commercial dynamics there. Yeah. But I'm wondering, I mean, I've obviously toyed with the idea of creating my own server and, uh, you know, and uploading videos to there. But right. yeah. your bandwidth would just crash the site. It would, it would, it would. And the, the thing is that if you go elsewhere, you, you're paying. Yeah. Vimeo charges. All the, all the major players actually charge. Uh, well, no, ma you mind you, Vimeo... And I've been using them for nine years, but they will allow 500 megabyte a week upload. upload yeah, yeah. Which is, you know, more than enough for the stuff I need to do. I mean, right, my videos okay. might be 25 megs. They're not massive. Yeah. They're not huge length content. Some right. of them will be, but I mean, but I, I am fairly, I'm fairly satisfied in the sense, as I've read their terms, that they're not as wide open to be abused i mean i've been watching people on youtube who've had their stuff removed discussing this and yeah. i mean there's these are fairly innocuous clients who just yeah. you know people basically troll and decide we lodge simultaneous uh, complaints spurious complaints and and they choke you they don't they just choke you by killing your ability to respond to them that's all you know that's true <sighs> it's so. it's it's obvious that if we could host video on our own sites, that would be the ideal solution. Uh, well, I do think, I mean, that has made me really conscious this week of, I mean, the, the, the question I put to the YouTube team was from the enemy, the state film, where the wife of the protagonist says, who will monitor the monitor of the monitors? He custodian, uh, custodians. Yeah. And I mean, when you think about it, we've got, you were talking about Brexit, sure. Whether you exit or Brexit or go anywhere else, it seems to me that the new world government is made of, of interchangeable leading parties called Facebook and Google and minor supportive parties called Microsoft and Apple. <laughs> and, <True. laughs> There's nobody else, and we're all the rest of us are just living under illusion that we're voting for some local hero, you know. <laughs> we're living in a digital world, right? Anyway, uh, okay, we're gonna uh, shall we pause the recording, John? Yeah, um, just a funny story, uh, okay, funny fine. Somebody, yeah. but uh, a young couple turned up at uh, Birmingham Airport yesterday for um a trip that the late young lady had saved for two years to take him away on his 30th birthday. Okay. Unfortunately, she'd booked from Birmingham, Alabama to Las Vegas, <sighs> not Birmingham. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. So uh, she yeah. obviously didn't pass the IQ test. Well, <laughs> it's not that difficult. You know, it's BHM <laughs> for Alabama and BHX for Birmingham. So, you know. Okay. It's not that hard to uh, see the, you know, the error of the ways, shall we say? Right. I hope she got a Ryanair price on it. You know. Ah, indeed. I think indeed. she lost oh. a lot of money, actually. <laughs> anyway, well, I look forward to seeing you this evening at five o'clock, Stephen. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. okay look forward All to right. you. Take Thanks, care, guys. Bye. 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 Right. Well, okay. I suppose yeah. it's goodbye from him. Uh, it's goodbye from me. And we'll see you at five o'clock today. And at 10 o'clock next Thursday, we'll be back for another Loving for Britain. Take and care. Bye. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Thank you.